Okay, so today we're going to talk about simplifying other types of radical expressions besides just square roots. And the good news is the process is kind of the same as it is for square roots. It's just uh, a few minor differences here and there. So, um, so by the time we're done, you should be able to evaluate or simplify different degree roots, be able to simplify, multiply, and divide radicals. And we're going to talk about some of those radical properties. All right, so first off, we have square roots because squares and square roots can, uh, are inverses, right? When you square 3, you get 9. And when you turn around and square root 9, you get 3. You're still looking for a number of times itself that gives you the radicand when you square root, right? So square roots and squares are inverses. Well, we have a lot of other exponents besides just squaring numbers, right? For example, we can cube a number. So if we want to undo cubing a number, we cube root, right? Um, same thing with if we want to raise the number to the fourth power. If I wanted to undo raising the number to the fourth power, I would do the fourth root. And then fifth root undoes raising something to the fifth power, and so on and so forth, okay? So we have different um, roots. The way we write it, right, is going to be with a radical sign like this guy, uh, where we still have a radicand inside the radical. So this is your radicand. And now square roots, so now our index is going to change. Now the number in this corner of this radical is going to change, right? Square root is kind of your default. So if I just make a, a radical sign with no number in the index spot, that's a square root. If I want a cube root, we put a 3 in that in index spot. If I wanted a fourth root, we put a 4 in that index spot. If I wanted a fifth root, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's how we're going to write it. How we go about simplifying is a little bit different. So remember with square roots, we kept talking about breaking out of jail, right? It takes two guys to break out of jail. So if we were to simplify this, rat this square root, right? So down upside down box 48. 2 goes into 48 24 times. 2 into 24, 12 times. 2 into 12, 6 times. 2 into 6, 3 times. And it took two to break one out of jail. So we'd circle our pairs, shoot this guy. We'd pull out a two, and then another two. So two twos are going to get out. And then three would go back in. And then for our variables, since it took two guys to break one out of jail, we would divide the exponent by two. So two will go into three one time. So we're going to pull an x out with one left over. So we're going to put one x back in. That was our rule for our exponents. And of course, we'd multiply the 2 and the 2 out there and get 4x square root of 3x, okay? When we do different roots, when we do a cube root like this, and we want to simplify that, instead of it needing to take two guys to break one out of jail, now it's going to take three. It's like the cops got better, right? Their aim has gotten better, and so they're going to be able to shoot more people. It's kind of sadistic, but... That's the that's kind of a way to look at it, right? So now when I break down 48 to so we're gonna just, just do the same thing, right? We're gonna factor down 48. But now instead of looking for pairs, instead of it taking two guys to break one out, now it's gonna take three. So now I've got a circle three of a kind. And the reason why it takes three is because the cops get better, those two guys get shot. So a two comes out. Since the 2 and the 3 down here don't have buddies to help them out, we just put them back in the radical and multiply them. Now, again, because it takes three guys to break one out, we're going to divide our exponents by 3. How many times will 3 go into it? However many times it will go into that exponent is how many you pull out. And whatever you have left over is what you put back in. So 3 will go into 3 one time. So we're going to pull 1x out with none left over, so no x's go back in. And so we get 2x cube root of 6. You need to make sure you bring your index down with uh, your radical. Okay? So that's it. 
Now, if it were a fourth route, we would be looking for four guys to break one out of jail. If it were a fifth route, five guys to break one out of jail. So the process is the same. It's just the number of guys we're looking to break one out of jail is going to change. Okay? Now, negatives. What do we do with a negative? Well, we said before that if you have a negative inside of a radical, you've got to pull an eye out, right? You've got to take your eye out. You've got to pull your eye out. But that's because if we're looking at square roots, square root requires two guys to be multiplied together to give you the radicand. And there, I'm sorry, not two guys. It requires one guy to be multiplied by itself two times to get you that radicand negative 1,000. Well, the problem with that is any number times itself is going to have the same sign. So two positives are going to multiply to give you a positive. Two negatives are going to multiply and give you a positive. So that was the reason why we had a problem with the negative inside the radical, and we had to pull an eye out. If you get something like the cube root of a negative number, we don't have that problem. Because now I'm looking for a number times itself three times. That will give me negative 1,000. Well, if you multiply three if you multiply a negative number times itself three times, then here, negative 10 times negative 10 is going to give you 100. Positive, right? So then a positive 100 times a negative 10 would actually give you a negative 1,000. So we actually can find a number times itself three times that will give you a, a negative number. So a negative inside the radical is not as big a deal. It doesn't create an imaginary number. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to pull the negative out. Okay? So there is a real cube root for negative 1,000. We'll get back to that in a minute. All right. Well, let's practice simplifying some. So the first thing I would do is, well, I would be looking for a negative inside the radical and then try to make a decision on what to do with it. But there's no negative here. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm looking at the index because now that tells me that I need three guys to break one out of jail. So when I do my factors, I'm looking for three guys. So 5 will go into 375 75 times. 5 will go into 75 15 times. 5 will go into 15 three times. Now it takes three to break one out of jail. So circle those three, shoot those two off. And so we're going to pull a 5 out and leave a 3 inside. So we get 5 cube root of 3. Okay, that's it. Um, now try this one. I'll give you a second to work on it. You can stop the video and try it and start it back up. But the first thing you've got to ask yourself is how many guys is it going to take to break one out of jail? And the answer to that is going to be 5 because your index is 5. So give it a shot and then start it up and check your answer. Okay, so let's break down 1215. 5 into 1215 will go 20, let's see, 243. Okay. Um, what will go into 243? Well, I know 3 will. It's going to go 81 times. 3 into 81 will go 27 times. 3 into 27 will go 9 times. 3 into 9 will go 3 times. So now I'm looking for five factors that are the same to break one out of jail. Here's five. And because I need five, it's because, well, the reason why I need five is because these four are going to get shot. So I'm breaking one out. So three comes out. Five stays in. Don't forget your index. So it's three fifth root of five. Okay. All right. Let's do some more. So a rule. What's the rule when you have a negative radicand? Well, because of this sign issue, when you multiply two numbers together that have the same sign, you get a positive. And when you multiply two numbers together that, get, that have opposite signs, you get a negative. The rule basically becomes this. If you have an even root, you've got to pull your eye out. If you have an odd root, you're just going to pull a negative out. Okay? And that's just a rule. If you can just kind of commit that to memory, then you'll be doing just fine. All right? So, for example, let's try one. Here I've got, so again, when I look to simplify a radical, the first thing I look for is, do I have a negative inside the radical sign? And here we do, right? Then I look to see, am I looking at an odd or an even index? Here's the index. It's odd. 
Since it's odd, I'm just going to pull the negative out front. So you get negative cube root of 256y to the seventh. Then I'm just going to go through my um, simplifying, right? So break down 256. 2, we're going to 256, 1, 2, 128 times. 2, we're going to 28, 64 times. 2, we're going to 64, 32 times. 2, we're going to 32, 16 times. 2 into 16, 8 times. Ooh, lots of 2s. And now, because my index is 3, I'm looking for 3 guys to break one out. So there's 3 here, 3 here. Um, all the guys in the circles are going to get shot except for 1. So that means I'm pulling, I got a negative out here. I'm pulling the 2 out, another 2 out, and then I'm leaving two twos back in. And then for our variable, again, since it takes three guys to break one out, I'm going to divide the exponent by three. So how many times will three go into seven? Well, that's twice. With one left over, so we put one y back in and bring down the index. So we multiply everything together that's on the outside and everything that's on the inside, and we get cube root. So we get negative 4y squared, cube root of 4y. Okay. Um, all right, let's try another one. So any negative inside the radical? No, no negative, right? So now we're going to just go into re, um, simplifying. So 2 into 144, 72 times. 2 into 72, 36 times. 2 into 36, 18 times, 2 into 18, 9 times, and then 3, and then 3. And because the index is a 4, I need 4 to break 1 out of jail. So I circle these 4. A 2 comes out. Two threes are going to go back in. And now because it takes 4 guys to break 1 out of jail, I'm going to divide each exponent by 4. So 4 will go into 8 two times with none left over, so I'm pulling 2 x's out and not putting any back in. 4 will go into 13 three times, so I'm going to go 3 y's to pull out with 1 left over, so 1 y goes back in, and I make sure I bring down my index. So we get 2 x squared y cubed, 4th root, 3 times 3 is 9, y. And there we're done. Okay. Uh, all right, now you try this one, right? It's got a negative in there, and the index is odd. So the question is, are you going to pull a negative out or an i out? Go back and look at your notes if you need to. But stop the video, try this, and then start it back up and see how you did. All right, because the index is odd, we're going to pull a negative out, not an i. Now go through your reducing. So 864, 2 we're going to that, 432, 2 we're going to that, 2, 16, 2 into 16, 108, 2 into 108, 54, 2 into 54, 27, 3 into 27, 9, 3 into 9, 3. Now, it takes three to break one out. So I got three twos here, and I got three threes here. So I'm pulling out a two, and I'm pulling out a three. So a two and a three. The negative was already sitting out there. Then we got our cube root. Now, exponents three. Oh, sorry, going back in. We've got two twos here. So two twos have to go back inside. Now for our variable, 3 will go into 4 for the x's. 3 will go into 4 one time, so 1x comes out with 1 left over, so 1x goes back in. For our y's, 3 will go into 25 8 times, so y to the 8th comes out with 1 left over, so 1y goes back in. And so to simplify everything out, we just multiply, and we're left with this. Negative 6xy to the 8th, cube root of 4xy. Okay. Uh, hopefully it's making sense. If not, make sure you come in and get some help. Star after school. Okay. Now, some properties. The multiplication property and the division property that we used before 
still hold up as long as the indices are the same. As long as in our two radicals the index is the same for both, then we can either multiply the insides or you know, divide the insides or make a fraction. Okay? But we have to be working with the same roots. So let's start checking this out. So for example, this guy. We've got two fifth roots. So yes, we can multiply these guys out. But what I want to do first is look to simplify. And this guy, I'm going to pull this negative out. And because the root is odd, I'm just pulling a negative out and not an i. And then I'm going to look to see if I can simplify the 16. 2 going to 16, 8 times, 2 into 8, 4 times, 2 into 4, 2 times. So there's four twos, but I need five. So unfortunately, I can't reduce anything, so I'm just going to multiply these two guys together. Outside times outside gets me a negative in here. And then inside times inside. I still got a fifth root. 6 times 16 is going to be 96. So now I'm going to break down 96. 2 into 96, 48 times. 2 into 48, 24 times, 2 into 24, 12 times, 2 into 12, 6 times, 2 into 6, 3 times. I'm looking for 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to break 1 out. So a 2 comes out here to join the negative. 3 goes back in, and this is a fifth root. So there we're done. Okay, so as long as the indices are the same, we can just multiply like we did our square roots. Okay, one more time here together. Fourth roots, since the roots are the same, uh, maybe look to simplify first. And with the 25, you just go 5 and 5. You don't have four of the same. So we can't simplify that guy yet. How about the 50? 2 into 50, 25, 5, 5. Nope, we need four to break one out. So that's not going to work. I don't see any negatives, so we're good there. Uh, exponents. 4 will not go into 3, so I can't simplify that guy. But 4 will go into 6, so the first set of parentheses are going to stay the same. We get the fourth root of 25x to the third times. Now, 4 will go into 6 one time, so we're going to pull out 1x with 2 left over. So 2x's go back in. Okay? Now, outside times outside for our radicals gives us x. Inside times inside gives us 25 times 50. Gives us 1250. x to the third times x squared is x to the fifth. Now I'm going to come over here and break down 1250. 2, 6, 25. 5, we're going to 6, 25. 1, 2, 5 times. 5 into 125, 25 times, 5 into 25, 5 times. Now, I'm looking for 4 to break 1 out, and there are 4 5s here. So 1 5 comes out, a 2 goes back in, and then we play our game. So we have an X here. Um, now, 4 will go into 5 one time, so we pull out one more X with one left over, so we put an X back in x times x is x squared, so we're done simplifying. It takes a minute. It does take a minute, so just stick with it. It's not hard, it just takes a minute, so hang in there. You'll be doing fine, okay? All right, you got one here for you to try, so give it a shot. Stop the video, start it back up, and check your answer. Okay, so what's the index? Right here, right here. There's nothing written there. That means we're dealing with a square root. If it makes you feel better, you can always write a 2 in there. It's like writing an exponent of 1. We don't, know, we don't write it usually, but we know that it really is 1. So for square roots, it's the same. The index is actually going to be a 2. So I'm looking to simplify first. So I'm going to do 72. 2 into 72, 36. 2 into 36, 18. 2 into 18, 9, and then 3, 3. And since the index is 2, I'm only looking for 2 now. We're back to looking for 2 to break one out. So you circle your pairs, you shoot one of them, you get a 2 and a 3 that will come out, and then a 2 goes back in. And then for your variables,
Um, divided by two. Two are going to three one time with one left over. And then the y's, two are going to two one time with none left over. So no y's go back in. Now I'm going to multiply that by, simplify over here. Well, the 10 goes 2 and 5, no pairs, so we're not going to simplify the 10. 2 will not go into 1 for the x anytime, so we don't pull anything out. We just leave the x in. For the y's, 2 will go into 3 one time, so a y comes out with 1 left over, so a y goes back in. Now we're multi ready to multiply outside times outside, inside times inside. So outside times outside gives you 2 times 3, which is 6. Then you got a couple of y's there, so you get y squared. Inside times inside, 2 times 10 is 20, x times x is x squared, and then y. And then we look to simplify again. 2 to 20, 10 times, 2 to 10, 5 times, a pair of 2's there, shoot one of them. So 2 comes out, so now we got 6 times 2. Then we have an x and a y squared. So now for the variables, for the x's, 2 goes into 2 one time, so an x comes out with none left over, so no x goes back in. Um, for the y, 2 will not go into 1, so we don't pull any more y's out. The y just stays in. So we got to put the 5 right here back in, and we have a y in there. Multiplying everything out, we get 12. x squared, y squared, square root of 5y. Boom. Okay. Did you get that? Hopefully you did. If not, get in here and get some help. Okay? All right. Now, what do we do when this happens? When we want to take the cube root of 343 and then square it. Okay? Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify my radical. Okay? And then we'll deal with it from there. So 343, that's going to go... Let's see, what we're going to 343. Um, I think 11 will. Got to get my calculator out. Actually, 11 will not. Maybe 7? Yeah, 7 will. So 7 going 343, 49 times. 7 into 49, 7 times. I'm looking for 3 to break one out. I've got 3 7s. Shoot 2 of them. So we're going to get a 7 outside of the radical, but nothing goes back in. That means the radical goes away. So I'm actually left with just 7 squared. 7 squared is 49. So there we're done. That's weird. The radical just went away. Okay. Um, here, we can try it again. Now we need the fourth root of 81. So we simplify. 3 goes into 81 27 times. 3 into 27, 9 times. 3 into 9, 3 times. Now we're looking for 4 to break 1 out of jail. Here's 4. Shoot 3 of them. A 3 comes out. Nothing goes back inside the radical, so the radical disappears, and we just get 3 to the 5th power. Well, 3 to the 5th power, you can always use your trusty calculator for that is 243. Okay, so it's kind of nice when the radical goes away, right? Now, um, let's look at the division property, right? So, we, any, I said before, anytime you have a fraction inside the radical, look to reduce the fraction first. I'm still going to do that, even though this is a fourth root instead of a square root. So, Let's take a look. Oh, I can't simplify 16 over 81. So let's break them up. We get the fourth root of 16 over the fourth root of 81. Um, let's try to simplify that. Uh, 16. 2 into 16, 8 times. 2 into 8, 4 times. 2 into 4, 2 times. I'm looking for 4 to break 1 out. Here's 4 twos. So I'm going to pull a 2 out. Nothing goes back inside the radical. So that's just 2. And the fourth root of 81, 81. 3 will go into 81 27 times. 3 into 27, 9 times. 3 into 9, 3 times. It takes 4 to break 1 out. I've got 4 threes. So I'm going to break a 3 out of jail. Nothing goes back in, so the radical goes away. Lo and behold, we just get 2 thirds. Nice. That worked out pretty well. OK. 
Okay?